Yes, Pastor. I agree on the value of the World Brotherhood Exchange, and I, well, I want to participate, but it's just getting away. I, I don't know. You see, I've got a pretty busy practice here. It's like today, one patient after another. In fact, my assistant just got away, and now I'm finally getting ready to go home myself. No, I wouldn't say the problem is financial. Uh, well, you see, the thing is, I don't know how my wife would take it. Yes, Helen. That's right, you've met her. Well, you see, Helen used to be my dental assistant back in the days when I was just getting started, and she's still my business manager. If I said I wanted to go halfway around the world and work for nothing, I, I don't know how she'd take it. Tonight? Oh, that's right, the banquet is tonight. All right, I'll bring her along, and uh, maybe the speaker will be able to convince her. But believe me, it'll take an awful lot of convincing. Right. See you there. Maybe like pulling teeth. You can't be serious. I certainly am. Pulling teeth in the jungle? Oh, Jamie, grow up. Dad didn't say anything about pulling teeth. He's an oral surgeon. He'll only be doing the real expert stuff. Right, Dad? Well, can't tell, Bobby. I might be doing almost everything. Do you know that most of the people in those far-off places have never had any dental attention in their whole lives? And another thing, Janie, it might not even be the jungle. Can't say where I'd be. Well, I can. You're going to be right here at home. You know as well as I do, George, what you're trying to tell us about is impossible for you. Ah, there speaks my beautiful, level-headed, practical wife. Well, somebody has to be practical. If, if I didn't keep books for you first... Oh, I know, honey. I'd never know if we had a million dollars or barely enough for the next meal, but... I do know this. God's been mighty good to us. Now, isn't it our Christian responsibility to share our blessings? Well, yes, but... But if you were to go away and, and leave me and the children... You why... can come along. Be my dental assistant, like you used to be. Oh, but what about the children? No problem. Why, some people leave their children with relatives or friends, and some people even take them along. Oh, George. Oh, boy, that would be real educational. We could see the whole world. Can we go, Daddy? Can we go? Oh, look, go. children, please. The only place you're going is upstairs to do your homework. Now, scoot. But, Mom. Oh, come on. Honestly, George, sometimes I think I've got three children. Well, what's so childish about wanting to serve in this way? Well, it, it might be all right for some people. But, honey, it's, it's a necessary thing, even for us. Let me try to explain it to you the way the director did on the phone today. Now, the idea is to enlist people for service in mission fields and all areas of need. People of all professions and skills. Now, they volunteer for a definite period, sometimes two or three months, sometimes two or three years, helping the missionaries. Now, what do you say? Well, could we make a contribution or something? 
Well, a contribution's fine, honey. And they need money for operating expenses, but they also need people. People who are willing to give their total selves in a specific service, to use what God gave them to help others. Now, say I volunteered for, well, three months. Three months? But what about your office? Lock it up. Well, then you'd have no income. Honey, the director told me that without exception, that when people returned home, they found that they more than made up for any financial loss. It's like casting your bread on the waters. It, it comes back in many different ways. Besides, you don't do a thing like this with the idea of getting something in return. You do it because there's a definite need, and you know you can help. Well, but there are a lot of people right here at home that need help. All right, there are a lot of people right here to help them. You could volunteer sometime in the future. Honey, the need exists now, and if I'm going to serve, I've got to commit myself now. The only question is, will I do it or not? But George, that isn't the only question. There are a lot of things to consider. For example, if you were to lock up your office, what about your assistant? Well, I could find her a fill-in job, and she'd be glad to cooperate. Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't. Oh, let me fix dinner. But you don't have to fix dinner. I already stopped on the way home and asked Mrs. Smith to come over. Now, she's going to fix dinner for the kids and sit with them until you and I get back from the banquet. Banquet? For the World Brotherhood Exchange. Now, come on, I told you about it last week. Well, I was hoping you'd forgotten. <laughs> And I almost did until the director called me on the phone this morning. Now, honey, you'll enjoy it. Dr. Walter Judd is going to be the speaker. You know, he was with Congress for so many years. And uh, Art Linkletter is going to show us some movies. Oh, and we'll be sitting at the same table with Dr. Burke. Burke? The famous eye specialist. Now, he just got back from serving six months overseas for the Brotherhood. He'll be able to give us a lot of important information. All right. We'll go to the banquet. But that's as far as you're going, my impractical but lovable husband. In conclusion, let me repeat, to demonstrate as Christian men and women your faith and your love. Long ago, our master came to preach good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim deliverance to the captives, to restore sight to the blind. He can do these things today through your hands, your heart, your skill. You who are doctors, dentists, nurses can heal. You who are technicians, teachers, skilled workers can help liberate people who are in the captivity of ignorance, superstition, and illiteracy. I salute you who have already given so generously so long. For those of you who have committed yourself to serve on a voluntary basis, I envy you the opportunity you will have to help on a person-to-person -person basis those who are in such great need. By obedience to our Lord's commission to go to the uttermost parts of the earth, your work will be a silent sermon on your faith in God's great love for all humanity. Thank you. Dr. Walter Judd, thanks for that applause. Believe me, he deserves a hand for all the time he's given in behalf of this cause. A lot of you folks out there ought to be applauded too. All you who have served and those who have made this program possible. Of course, a picture is worth 10,000 words, so now I'm going to show you what Christian men and women are doing around the world. Mr. Projectionist, will you start the film and will somebody please turn out the lights? Southeast of Africa is the fascinating island of Madagascar. Now we're in the southern part of Madagascar watching patients outside a mission hospital. To save time, the WBE dentist gives preliminary examinations outside and then takes the most urgent cases first. But all will get the same highly skilled professional attention. Furthermore, Local people are taught as the dentist works. In time, they will be able to perform much of the work that mission doctors do. Because the mission doctors are always busy, sometimes they can help only the worst cases. They are in great need of assistance. There is also an urgent need for medical technicians of all kinds to work with missionary nurses. 
In a village not far from the hospital, another volunteer carries on two jobs. She teaches English to children who have never known any language but Malagasy, the native tongue of Madagascar. And she also assists the indigenous church with secretarial duties. At this mission school in Madagascar, there was a sort of special need. The school building was adequate, but there was no running water. That is, not unless you ran with a bucket. A builder who was giving a year's service asked his home congregation for funds to buy pipe and put together a water system from a spring in the hills. With his skill and the financial help of folks at home, he brought about a simple miracle, but one that's certainly appreciated. Goodbye, Bucket Brigade. Next, let's travel to the kingdom of Nepal between India and Tibet. We're in the ancient city of Kathmandu, high in the Himalayas near Mount Everest. And this is really up in the world. You can tell the climate by the clothes. Urgh, it's cold outside. But there are warm hearts and helping hands in this hospital. Often the sick are carried in from as far as 30 miles in the mountains. Here's a missionary doctor checking a morning lineup. Here's a line waiting for the volunteer dentist. There are just two other dentists in this land of nine million, one for the king, one for the army. Think what this means to these people. Now we're going over to the other side of Africa, to the Cameroons. Up on the hill beyond this village, you'll see a little group of buildings. A mission hospital and dispensary. You can judge the need by the size of this line of waiting patients. And this pretty volunteer nurse is one who helps to meet it. She spent months helping with all the work in the hospital where you see cases like this. And in the nursery, where this volunteer doctor is treating a heart condition that might otherwise have been fatal. We move south now to the jungle country of the Cameroons, and we come to a dispensary where another volunteer dentist serves. His wife came along as his assistant, and the smiles tell you they both like it. The patients also appreciate it, for a toothache is no fun, especially in the jungle. One thing sure, this man will never have another toothache. By the way, the dentist needs to know only a few words of the local language, like, uh, open up. <laughs> the language of compassion does the rest, and who needs an interpreter for a smile? Next, let's go to Ethiopia, that vast country just south of the Red Sea. The symbol of Ethiopia, the Lion of Judah, in the capital city of Addis Ababa, a place of fascinating contrasts between the ancient and the modern, where many lived much as the people lived in the time of Solomon. If you ever want to get somebody's goat, the goat market is the place to go. Be sure to try it out first, though. You might have to carry it home. This church in Ethiopia was built by a volunteer builder who then started this one before going home. His work was taken over by a second builder who was also constructing a schoolhouse for mission use. Now this is a good example of how these builders work, using the materials and manpower of the country. Building structures that will last for many generations and meet the needs of all of this rapidly growing country. Giving the men an opportunity to learn new trades, and at the same time to earn some badly needed money. We're still in Ethiopia, and now we're going up into rugged mountain country. Beyond the mountains is a beautiful valley where people live as they did centuries ago. These volunteers are watching farmers thrashing their grain as people did in ancient times. The man is a farm expert. He's come to help these people increase production and prosperity by using improved agricultural methods. He also hopes to increase the yield per acre by introducing new kinds of grain. Cattle raising can also be improved in this country, for many of the animals are scrub stock and poorly cared for. Often a special summons comes for the farm expert's wife. 
she's a veterinarian and the only one available. When she arrives, she finds a sick animal, and because of her special training, she's able to diagnose the trouble and prescribe a cure. It so happens that she's also a registered nurse. So, when needed, she can double in the mission clinic. This man is a builder who has volunteered to construct a badly needed hospital. The foundation gives you some idea of its size. No one but a skilled professional could handle this job. And he has realized he's the man to see it through. While he's building, his wife has gone to work in the mission clinic helping give inoculations. Watch this smile. Now you're seeing Taiwan, which you may know better as Formosa. This is the only part of China that is still free. This little group of islands just off the coast of the communist mainland. Excuse me. I'll be right back, George. Maybe none of my business, but something wrong? I'm afraid Helen's pretty strongly opposed to my getting into this sort of thing. I take it you want to go. Well, yes, I do, but... Well, when your wife can't see it your way, then what? <laughs> the bachelor, that's hard for me to answer. I might try, though. Tell you, suppose I drop by your house some evening and just sort of started telling about my experiences with the WBE. She might come to see it your way. What do you think? Hmm? Hmm? Yes, it might help. Thank you, Dr. Burton. Good night. I better see if Helen's all right. Excuse me. Let me put it this way. Aside from an educational experience, I've seen the world. Other cultures, historical spots, and the adventure of it. All good. But that's only a small part of the whole picture. My profession is restoring sight. <laughs> but I'll admit that I was blind myself in a way and until I became personally involved. I slowly came to see the meaning of Christ's words. Inasmuch as you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. For example, I know what a surgical instrument can do in the hands of a surgeon at the right time. But if it's not available at the right time, it's useless. This is Dr. Judge said, the master healer heals through our skills. He uses us as his instruments. I believe now that I've been a useful instrument in the hands of God. I was where I was needed most. And don't think for a minute that I've sacrificed anything. I know I've received a thousand times more than I gave. Out of this experience, I've, I've received a new sense of values that have made life more meaningful. Slowly it unfolded before my eyes that I'm Christ's helper, that he uses us in carrying out his healing. It comes into sharper focus overseas because there are so few to help. Do you see it, Mrs. Lund? Do you see what I came to see? Yes, I see it, Dr. Burke. This must have been a, a wonderful experience for you. The whole idea of the work is wonderful, but I just can't see it for us. Uh, excuse me, Dr. Burke. I, I must see how the children are. Well, maybe when she comes back, she'll... I don't think so. Women have been known to change their minds, you know. I'll have to be going. I'm hospital rounds. I'm sorry, Doctor. Believe me, I'm sorry, too. Well, good night, Dr. Burton. Thanks for trying. Good night. Burke had to go. Oh. 
Honey, I've been thinking, and I know you, and I know you want to go. You won't be happy till you get this out of your system. So... You mean, you're willing to have me go alone? Oh, what kind of a wife do you think I am? I still can't see it, but, uh... Well, I think I can still remember how to be a good dental assistant. Oh, honey, you're an angel. Let's say a reluctant angel. That's good enough for me. I'll call the director the first thing in the morning and tell him we're going. Yep, that's right, Pastor. Helen finally agreed. And we're committing ourselves to three months' service. No, no, the neighbors volunteered to take care of the house and even mow the lawn. So that only leaves us two problems to settle. Where do we go and can we take the children there? Uh, there's an immediate need for a dentist in Manambaro, Dr. Lund. Uh, that's in Madagascar. Uh, we'll help you on all the details of getting there, of course. You'll need visas and tickets and accommodations en route and orientation. Your housing will be furnished at the mission. No, I haven't forgotten the children. Uh, they can stay at a missionary's children's school in uh, Fort Dauphin. Uh, that's less than, oh, 20 miles from where you'll be. And uh, they'll love it. No expense except for the meals. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, now one thing more. Uh, just where is Madagascar? <laughs> Never mind, I'll look it up on the map. But wherever it is, we'll be there. Be Dr. and Mrs. Lund. Oh. That's right. And you must be Reverend Davidson, the missionary here. How do you do? I'm very sorry I wasn't here to greet you yesterday, but I've been up in the interior. Oh, that's all right. I see you're getting settled. You bet. I'm anxious to get to work. Well, there'll be plenty of it, I can promise you that. I don't know what we'll do without you people. We're getting to depend on you. Uh, we're glad to lend a hand. I see you've located everything. Oh, uh, this little two-bed dispensary is for your use, too, in case any of your patients require it. Oh, oh and, uh... Fine. Cool, too. If there's anything else you need, this is the fellow that gets it for you. You know, Dennis? Lady Dennis, too? You want me? <laughs> cool, too. This is Dr. and Mrs. Lund. Hello, Kutu. How do you do? Anything you need, you call Kutu. You take good care of him, huh? All right, Kutu, you run along now. <laughs> Keep your ears peeled for us, though, huh? He's cute. Does he live here at the mission? No, he lives at a village up the road. He's a Christian. His mother is, too. But his father calls the witch doctor when something bothers him. Well, I think I'll leave you to your patients. What patients? Haven't you looked out in the hall? No. Some of those folks have walked 30 miles with a toothache. Well, get set, doctor. I'll try and send them in one at a time. Come on, Eddie. Mother Yeshua, see you tonight. Right.
morning, George. Helen? Well, how's business? Busier than ever, John. Believe it or not, in two months, we've handled over 700 patients. Up to 70 extractions in one day. That's a lot of work. Oh, believe me, I'm not complaining. You know, it makes you feel kind of good when you can help people this way. Oh, uh, what I came in for is, uh, have you seen Kudu? I need him. No, not since yesterday. It's funny, he's usually with an earshot. His father hasn't been well, I think. I think I'll run over to the village and check. I'll see you later. So long. Your father's got a very high fever, Kutu. I'm afraid the trouble's in his mouth. I'm going to ask your mother if it's all right to get Dr. Lund. Azufadi. Ekenao, Bani, Yanswana, Doctor. Hurry, Kutu. I go, I go. Extensive swelling. Possibly an abscess or a cyst. Could even be an adamantinoma. What's that? It's a type of tumor. I'm afraid it's weakened and fractured his jaw, saturated his system with the infection. Pretty serious, then. Yeah, it could be fatal. With his dehydration and high fever, I'll have to start him on penicillin, bring his temperature down, and then operate. Can't do that here. Yeah, we'll have to take him to the clinic. Come on, give me a hand. We'll get him out to the car. George, for fighting you so long. Forgive me too, Lord. 